All right, we're in section 5.5 of Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. We're going to do factoring using multiple methods. So the key to factoring is that there are steps. We've learned all the different factoring methods in the previous lectures. Now we have to kind of pull it all together so we can use them together at the same time on one expression. And these are the steps that you're going to want to go through whenever you have an expression that says factor completely. The first step for all factoring is make sure you pull out the GCF. And this is what I've been saying in the lectures. With every factoring question, you always look for a GCF first. After you do that, it all has to do with how many terms are in your, your expression. If there are four terms, we factor by grouping. If there are three terms, we're looking at trinomials, either a standard trinomial or a trinomial that we'll use square root on because of the lead coefficient. If the lead coefficient is one, it's a standard trinomial, you can factor it in one step. If the lead coefficient is not one, we're gonna use a square root method or the AC method, whatever method you learned for that lesson. If there are only two terms, then you're looking for the difference of squares. Remember, perfect square minus a perfect square, and that's a pattern that you have to remember. Um, once you go through these six steps, you should have all the factoring down. So we're going to practice it on the next page. All right, we're going to start with 8x squared minus 98. Right there. Let's zoom in. All right, the first step is always to look for a GCF. So is there anything common here? It looks like they're both divisible by 2. Because I don't think 98 is divisible by 4. No, it's not. So they're both divisible by 2. So we'll take out a 2 as a GCF. That's the first step. What does that leave us with? 4x squared minus 49. The next step is to look at how many terms you have. So after GCF, look at how many terms you have. There are two terms in this expression. So you're looking here. You don't have to look at the GCF. It's done. It's going to stay out there. How many terms do you have in your parentheses? There are two terms. What do we look for with two terms? We look for the difference of squares. Is this the difference of squares? Yes, we have a perfect square, perfect square, the minus sign. So our GCF always stays there, and then we factor what's left in the parentheses depending on how many terms we have. So to factor the difference of squares, we take the square root of each term, and those go here and here. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 49 is 7. And the difference of squares has 1 plus 1 minus. And that's it. Then you're done. So let's look at this one. And again, the first step is always to look for a GCF. Is there a GCF here? Well, we have a minus sign right off the bat. We'll factor out something minus. Um, is there anything else common here? There are some x's common. They all have at least three x's, so we can factor out an x cubed. Are there any y's common? It looks like they all have at least two y's, so we're going to factor out a GCF of negative x cubed y squared. So I'm going to write that under all three of these terms to help me figure out what's left in the parentheses. So by factoring out a negative sign, all these signs are going to change. So we're going to have a 4, and then remember we subtract the exponents. So we're going to have a 4x squared, the y's cancel, plus 12xy plus 9y squared. And then we look at how many terms we have. We have three terms here. And if you look at the pattern here, this looks like a perfect square trinomial. We have perfect squares here and here and a plus sign here. So the GCF is going to stay as negative x cubed y squared. And we're going to see if this is a perfect square trinomial. What's the square root of this term? 2x. What's the square root of this term? 3y. Can I check it? By multiplying and double. 2x times 3y is 6xy. When I double that, I do get the 12xy. So I can pull down this middle term, put a square on, and we're done.
Where's the next one? There it is. Okay. So the first step, look for a GCF. Well, again, we're going to take this minus sign off as part of a GCF. All of these terms are divisible by 4, so that's going to be part of the GCF. And they all have at least 1x. So that's the GCF, negative 4x. So we'll divide everything by negative 4x. All right, what is that going to give us here? x minus 8 minus x squared. Ooh, this is interesting because this is a nice trinomial, but it's all in the wrong order, isn't it? So maybe I need to start again because what's going to happen is I need to have this x squared as a first term, and it's got a minus sign on it. So let's scratch this and try again. I don't know if I can erase. Nope. Yes? All right. Let's start again. Let's write the whole expression again. Let's put it in descending order. Let's put it in descending order. Because that will help, won't it? This x cubed term should go first. So let's write this term first. So we're going to start again. 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus 32x. And when we put it in descending order, we see really we don't need to factor out the negative sign because it's not on the lead coefficient. So we'll use this now. There is still a 4 common and an x common. So we can still factor out 4x as a GCF. And that gives us x squared minus x plus 8. And now we can factor this trinomial as a standard trinomial. So the GCF of 4x is still there. x squared is x times x. The first sign comes down. Multiply the signs to get the second one. So negative times positive makes negative. Looking for factors of 8 that add to make 1. Well, I don't believe there are any factors of 8 that add to make 1. Are there? These will not add to make 1. These will not add to make 1. So this is scratched. And it turns out that this is your fully factored form. The only thing you could do here was a GCF. Now that was complicated. All right, let's try this one. Okay. All right, I'm looking at this. I don't want to make the same mistake I made on the last question by factoring out the negative when I really didn't need to. If you look across all of these, um, it looks like they all have a 6 in common, but it also looks like they all have an x in common. So when I rearrange these, I'm going to probably want this term to be first because it has the highest exponent on it. So I'm going to start by putting these in descending order of y. So we'll have a 12y cubed x plus 42xy squared minus 24xy. And we're going to factor out a GCF. So they all have a 6 in common. They're all divisible by 6. They're all divisible by x, and they're all divisible by y. So that's the GCF, and we're going to divide them all by 6xy. That will give us 2y squared plus 7y minus 4, and the x and y both cancel there. Good. That looks much better. Now, we have this trinomial that the only way to factor it is to use that square root method. So we're going to let the GCF hang out for a while. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to do anything, but he'll be in our final answer. And we're just going to work with this trinomial here. We're going to use the square root method, which says that we have to multiply the front term and the end term both by 2. So we'll multiply both of these by 2. So we'll have 4y squared plus 7y minus 8. And then we square root this term. That gives us 2y times 2y. The first sign comes down. So this plus sign comes down. 
plus positive times negative makes negative. So we'll have a negative here. And now we're looking for factors of 8 that subtract to make 7. They're different signs, so it's subtraction in the middle. And that will be 8 and 1. And then we divide by the GCF. The GCF here is 2. The GCF over here is 1. And remember, these always multiply to make that number that you multiplied with at the top. So 2 times 1 is 2. Divide both of these by 2. When you divide these by 1, it's not going to change. So divide both of these by 2. We have y plus 4, 2y minus 1, and our GCF from up here needs to come down here. So 6xy. And we're done.